Hi friends. <laughs> so it has been over a year and a half since I last podcast, which is crazy. And I was rewatching my last one, which was in January of 2019. And at that point I hadn't podcast in a while either. And at the end of my video, I kind of talked about not wanting to put pressure on myself to podcast and that I would just do it when I, you know, felt like it. And apparently I didn't feel like it because yeah, it's been that long since I podcast, but lots has changed, um, obviously, and it would take me days to tell you everything, but I do want to kind of fill you in on what's been going on with me. First of all, I'm super happy to be doing this again. Um, like I said, watching back my last one, I was like, oh, I really kind of miss um, just talking to everybody. And I've actually had a handful of subscribers recently, so I don't know if there's kind of a new set of people now kind of watching podcasts and they're finding their way to me. So I, um, I don't know, I just thought it was kind of time to, to, to start doing this again. Um, so first of all, so after the last time I podcast, um, I kind of did a little bit of a rebranding, I guess. Um, this is my kind of hobby business. It's definitely not my full-time thing. I have a full-time job otherwise. Um, but I had been going by not your average knits as kind of my name for everything. Um, but in March, I kind of decided that I wanted to change that uh, for a couple reasons. So first, I had found someone, I don't know if it was through the hashtag on Instagram, but I had found someone who um, was using Not Your Average Knits, um, and she was local to me, kind of coincidentally, and had been doing some craft fairs and things like that. So I kind of just didn't want there to be confusion. Um, but also, I had been thinking about it for a while because at that time, I had been weaving um, and selling some of my woven stuff for a little over a year um, and kind of having knits in the name was a little different since I was also weaving um, and at the time I was kind of thinking about expanding to actually do hand dyed yarn um, which I'll tell more about because I did actually do that and am doing that um, so anyway so I wanted just kind of a new name to sort of encompass all that so where I landed um, is calling myself Bridgefield Fiberworks um, the Bridgefield part is a little bit unique to me. Um, I grew up in a town called Southbridge. Um, my last name is Bridgio, so Bridge is kind of a shortened version of that. Uh, at the time I created the name, which is another change over the last 18 months, I lived in a town called Wakefield. So I just kind of combined it all to be Bridgefield. Um, and then Fiberworks, I just thought was kind of a fun word um, just to kind of encapsulate um, lots of different things and just kind of give me the ability to expand things as I wanted to. Um, so anyway, so I did decide, well, th that was kind of a reason too that I was hesitant about podcasting again since kind of the name of this podcast is Not Your Average Knits. I'm still a little undecided on what to do about that. I think I'm still going to keep that as the name on YouTube just easier. Um, and especially since like if other people have referred to me in other podcasts over time, I don't really want there to be like no Not Your Average Knits anywhere. Um, so I think I'm going to keep that as the name. Um, but I'll probably title the video something different. Um, and I think I'm just going to date the videos instead of actually doing episode numbers. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about. Um, anyway, so there are new names um, both on Instagram and Etsy. Um, I also have a Facebook page now, Bridgefield Fiberworks. Um, so I'll try and put the text below, but basically it's Bridgefield Fiberworks, one word. Um, so yeah, so I'll update all of that stuff. My Ravelry name is still Cabrigio, so you can find me there, but I'll make sure those links to all of those places are down below um, in the video. Um, okay, so <laughs> life updates. I guess there's been a lot. Um, first, you'll notice that I am wearing glasses. Um, I've had glasses, contacts like forever, but normally when I do podcasts, I'm wearing my contacts. I used to wear contacts 95% of the time. Um, one of the things that happened actually not around the time that I was podcasting last time I started noticing that I was losing peripheral vision like lower peripheral vision out of both eyes um, And I'm still kind of struggling with that um, And when I wear glasses, I just don't notice it as much because your vision is just kind of straight through the glasses and everything like around is normally blurry anyway um, When I wear contacts, it's just obvious to me what I can no longer see so it just kind of doesn't make me feel so good So um, get used to this this new look with the glasses um, so, but then after I podcast too, so I mean, I guess a lot happened in 2019. Like I said, I changed the name in March. I did start dyeing yarn over the summer. 
um, of 2019 and I'll show you some of that later on but you can find a hand dyed yarn of mine in my Etsy shop um, I do it sort of on a very small scale and since it's not like I'm well known yet for yarn dyeing um, I do kind of struggle of like doing a lot ahead of time putting it in stock or doing custom orders or pre-orders um, I think a lot of indie dyers kind of struggle with what the right thing is for for their uh, business but um, anyway, I'm always open to custom dyeing anything anyone wants. I do have a lot of stuff in stock right now. Some of my colors are one of a kind because I'm still kind of playing around. Um, and then I do have other colors that are kind of my, my standard recipes that I can recreate. So um, anyway, that's kind of been an exciting thing. So, so check that out. But that was a lot um, last summer is when I started that in 2019. Um, that fall, I went to Rhinebeck which was awesome. Um, still an amazing experience and I'm very sad that we're not having it in person this year. Um, but again, that's 2020. <laughs> um, so yeah, so end of 2019, had Ryan back, did the craft fair where I sell a lot of stuff. Again, some of my woven items were super popular, so that was exciting. Um, but yeah, I always love that. So that was a great experience. Again, not having it this year and I'm very bummed. Um, but I do sell a lot of my kind of finished products, uh, woven stuff on my in my Etsy shop as well. Um, then I guess this year, like I, doesn't everyone feel like it's just gone all of a sudden and we're all looking forward to 2021. Um, so February, my husband and I go on our usual Vegas vacation. Um, so that was fun. We had a really good time. It was wonderful weather at that point. Um, COVID was kind of not much that we knew about at that point, although we were a little hesitant about flying at that point in time in February. Also, um, we ended up selling our condo. Um, so we had only lived there a couple years when I started the, um, podcast and we were actually in an apartment and had bought the condo not long after. Um, we just kind of took advantage of a seller's market, um, we're always open to kind of moving around um, we kind of handle that pretty well even though it's a little stressful um, and yeah we just kind of we were just open to change at that point someone initially had shown an interest in the condo ended up not being the ones that actually bought it but it kind of gave us the impetus to just sort of put it on the market and see what we could do and we actually made money in two years um, so it just kind of allowed us to build up our bank account a little bit get more in savings and we're currently um, in an apartment right now um, I will do a tour uh, on another video. I feel like it would just take too much time with everything I have to do now um, and I need to clean it a little bit but I have this really awesome loft area that as soon as we saw the floor plan um, of this apartment I told my husband I'm like I want that entire loft. So I use the loft area for knitting and weaving. Um, it's actually currently my remote working area which is coming up next. Um, and then I have a big walk-in closet where I have like all my um, supplies and my hand dyed, uh, the bare yarn for dyeing, um, lots of bins of yarn and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so I'll do a tour another time, but I definitely love it. Okay, so when we get back from Vegas, um, we literally got the keys to this apartment and started moving things in. Um, my work, so I work at a college in Boston, my work ended up shifting to remote uh, March 13th at the end of that week um, we ended up we were like moving things at the very beginning of March we ended up closing on our condo I think like March 16th or 17th we literally had to like go to our realtor's office everyone like starting the procedures of like washing your hands and wearing a mask and this and that and um, so yeah so it was crazy I mean we got super lucky that we were able to close in time before things literally shut down for good um, so that was kind of a miracle that that all happened. So we were basically settled in our new place, had closed on the condo um, when everything kind of start shutting down. So um, so my work went remote, like I said, the middle of March. Um, we ended up staying remote all through summer. And then our school is one school in Boston, one of the few as of right now, um, that did decide to go fully remote for fall. Um, so as of right now, I'm remote through, I don't know, beginning of January at least. Um, so it's been a bit of an adjustment, um, but kind of nice. I have my own space up here. Uh, my husband's a high school teacher, so they went remote at the end of the year. Um, and they are actually starting up again, uh, in about a month in some sort of hybrid version. I know a lot of schools all across the country are doing different stuff in other countries too. Um, 
But anyway, so he's been home too. So it's just, it's been crazy. I mean, for everyone, it's been an adjustment for everybody. Um, so yeah, so I guess that's most of life stuff right now. Um, so let's jump into knitting. Uh, I obviously couldn't tell you everything I've done in the last year and a half, um, but I do have a decent amount of stuff. Some things are blocked, some things aren't, um, but I'll kind of show you. Um, I'll also mention too, so on my Ravelry page, um, I do put a lot of my projects, most of them, almost all of them. Um, and I try to keep it updated with pictures and the yarn I used and the needles I used and all that. So I, I don't, it's been so long right now that I don't have all of that detail of all of these projects to give you. Um, moving forward, I'll try to, you know, make sure I kind of remember needles and, and yarn and all of that stuff as I show things. Um, but you can go to my page on Ravelry, K Brigio, um, and see all of that there. Um, one thing I should mention on the, I guess, Ravelry note, I know that there's been a lot of struggles with people not being able to um, use Ravelry since they changed kind of the look of the whole thing. Um, I did put the large majority of the patterns that I design um, also on my Etsy page. Um, so that way, if you're interested in some of my designs, um, you can go to my Etsy page to find them. Like I said, it's not all of them, but I put like the more popular ones up there. If you ever see something that I show and you don't see it on Etsy and you want to buy the design, let me know and I'll definitely add it to Etsy so that everyone um, has access to it. Um, and again, if you don't use Ravelry and you don't aren't able to go to my project page and kind of see what needles and yarn I've used and all that stuff, just send me a message either um, under the video um, or on Instagram. Um, I also have a Gmail email, which is bridgefieldfiberworks at gmail.com. Um, so you can reach me there too. So lots of different ways. Okay, you wanna see some stuff? Um, oh, I'll show you this first. So coincidentally, um, when I podcast in January of 2019, I had just designed um, my Snow Castles shawl. Um, so this I literally just finished like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. So I did another version of it. And this is in um, Miss Babs Yowza. So when we went to Rhinebeck last year, um, I bought one big skein of Yowza in the uh, blue color um, and then just a mini in the gray. Like she has Yowza minis that I think are like a third of the size maybe. Um, and I was just able, like had like this much yarn left of the Yowza mini in the gray color um, to do the whole shawl. So I'm super excited about that. So if you have a stash of Yowza, this is definitely a good stash buster. Um, it's DK weight, uh, size seven needles, I think. And it's all mosaic. So... Um, it's all kind of slip stitches. You don't have to carry more than one color at a time. Um, super kind of easy way to do a kind of neat graphic, um, more than one color look without kind of the actual color work, stranded color work type of thing. Um, anyway, so that's done. That's up there. Um, this, so this pattern, make sure I'm showing you the right side. This pattern is called a mother's prayer. Um, it's a crescent shaped shawl wrap. Um, this was the mystery knit along that um, the, the Periscoping sisters, um, Amy and Debbie, did this year. Every year on Mother's Day, they do a mother's something or other um, type of pattern. Um, I was able to test knit this for them this year. Um, so what was fun about this, so this is actually, I have it with me. So this is actually yarn that I dyed. This is my chocolate covered um, like duo. So it's this beautiful mauve um, pink colorway um, and then like a brown and there's a little bit of the brown kind of in the pink colorway as well so this is actually what it looks like in the yarn it's showing pretty good it's just like a mauvey color that mixed with the brown so these are the two skeins that I used for this and I do have some of I'm pretty sure I have some of those as duos in my shop but if you're interested let me know so it was just one skein of each um, really kind of love this wrap it's a really good um, size for like a circular wrap um, and the lace is just so pretty it opened up really well it also has this um i don't know if you can even see it that well but it has these little like kind of picos um on the edge but like in the pink color so they look like little like rosettes kind of love it anyway i really enjoyed test knitting this um, and it was kind of fun to make something in in my yarn too so a mother's prayer i think if i said that right <laughs> Um, oh, I also did, I'll see if I can put a picture in, but so again, coincidentally, when I did my last podcast, 
Um, I had shown you the Umaro blanket that I finished by Jared Flood, which is this huge, gorgeous, cabled, crazy blanket um, that I had given to my friends as a very late wedding present um, around the time that they were due for their first baby. Well, since then, they have had a second baby, um, and I knit a really neat um, chevron baby blanket in this like gradient set that I had got at one of the yarn crawls um, last year that we did. Um, anyway, so if I remember to put a picture up, I will. Um, other, let's see, finished objects. This is, I'm already gonna forget the name of it, um, Hipster by Hohi Locatelli. Um, so this again is kind of crescent shaped. It has this really neat kind of, um, I don't know what you even call that, but like a hatch, something hatch maybe? I don't know, but like these little like cross stitches um, and then a lot of garter and then these kind of neat like textured areas. Um, this yarn, Plymouth worsted, something like that. Um, again, when I went on the yarn crawl last year, um, you know, I always kind of, when I go to things like that, try and have a couple patterns in mind that I'm specifically buying yarn for, and this was one. Um, that's something I should say too. So the one thing with COVID and being kind of homebound for a while, um, I didn't end up buying a lot of yarn. Um, I think just an adjustment in general, I just felt like off with like knitting and stuff and I didn't buy a lot of yarn. And like they didn't have the yarn crawl, webs didn't have the tent sale, obviously no Rhinebeck coming up. Um, so I didn't really have a lot of like events where I would typically buy a, a good chunk of yarn. Um, and since I started dyeing, I'm a lot kind of pickier, I guess, about what yarn I buy. Um, you know, some colors I see and I'm like, ooh, maybe I can dye that for myself if I want to make something with that color. Um, but at the same time, there's some stuff that other dyers do that like I can't even imagine how they do it or what kind of work it takes to do it. So there is definitely yarn that I buy that I know is would be impossible for me to even try to recreate. Um, and obviously I still want to support other dyers as well, but, um, but I really haven't bought as much as I normally would over the last, definitely since COVID, but even a little bit before that, since I started dyeing yarn. Um, but I've definitely been trying to, while we've been home, knit some of those projects that I have yarn for that I've kind of been waiting to, to, to use, um, and just stash bust, like find some new projects and just kind of figure out what I have and if it's something that I can work uh, work with and that's something too with moving and I think I've said this multiple times because I've moved multiple times um, It's always nice to kind of go through your yarn and just kind of remind yourself what you have and why you loved it when you bought it and actually use it and knit with it um, Also, I should say I do have an Instagram page called um, I'll put it on the screen or down below um, Bridgefield. I think it's Bridgefield underscore D stash um, So I have a lot of my yarn on there and I kind of add some every now and then um, and if you buy four skeins or more, or like four items, four posts or more, I want to say I do 10% off or 20% off. I don't know. It's on my Instagram page. Um, but anyway, so that too, like I'm always happy to be de-stashing some stuff if I'm not going to use it right away. And I know other people could use it and love it and knit it. Um, and then even in Ravelry too, I have a lot of like the stash that I have. I have it even set up as for sale or trade and that kind of stuff. Anyway, so this was one that I had been wanting to make for a while. So I did this over the last couple months. Um, really love it. I didn't do, I think she does t like tassels on the end, maybe in her sample. And I just decided not to do that. Um, but anyway, so that's finished and blocked. A lot of the stuff I didn't block. Um, another Hohi Locatelli shawl. Yeah, so these all aren't blocked. I probably shouldn't show them because they're not going to be as nice unblocked, but um there's just so much I figured I might as well. This is the Jody shawl, which I've knit before. Um, and this was definitely stash. So um, this top yarn was left over um, from Lavender Loon. I had done, and I think I would have showed it because it was a while ago. I had made a like a poncho um, out of her DK yarn. So that's this one. Um, the kind of red and brown is shoot totally blanking i don't know it's in ravelry sorry i don't know and then this brown was actually my own hand dyed um and it was one of the first skeins i dyed and i ended up over dyeing it and changing it and doing all of these things to it so it was basically just like a, a dark brown with some specks of like a 
green color in it, like an army green. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can't really see the lace that well because it's not blocked. But I had made one of these before. Super easy, nice way to kind of stash bust um, DK yarn. So that's Jody. Um, let's see. I made a couple cowls. Again, not blocked, so it's not going to be as pretty as it will be. That was something too with COVID. Like I kind of feel like once I finished something, I was just done and like didn't have the desire to um, to leave in ends and block. Like I need to take the time to to do all that. But um, this is the I wrote the name down. I'm trying to find it. Uh, Midsummer haze, and it's a very long cowl. Um, I had actually seen this, the Yarn Hoarders podcast, she had done one, um, and it's just kind of neat, because it's, so it's a circular cowl, but like the front is V-shaped, um, so it just kind of, I think when it's on, just sort of like covers your chest really well, um, and this yarn, <laughs> I don't know the colorway, um, the yarn is Leading Men Fiber Arts, um, yeah, I have no idea what the colorway is, I knit this a while ago. Um, but I really should block it soon because it's super pretty. Um, and it was pretty easy, you know, you knitting around for most of it. Um, yeah, just kind of something different. This was one of those things too I saw on her podcast, wanted to make it, was like, hmm, what do I have for yarn? And I had this yarn. Then this is called the Everly. Um, this is, God, I can't think of her name and I love her stuff. Sorry, I'm unprepared, but I just wanted to get this done <laughs> and get all of this stuff out. And literally I could go for hours and I'm trying not to make it too long. Um, oh, Cheryl Faust. Um, she makes stunning mosaic shawls. Um, and this one was one that, so my knitting group and I, who we haven't seen each other since like before I went to Vegas. So it's been a long time and we're all very sad. Um, had bought yarn. I think it webs um, to do this all together. And I think everyone's at least cast it on, um, but I kind of at one point went bonkers just to sort of finish it. This is using um, Haiku Sueño, which is yarn that I love. I had made a um, the Odyssey Shawl by Holy Locatelli um, in this yarn. Again, got the yarn from a yarn crawl um, and just loved it. It's a really, really neat blend. It's fairly inexpensive like relative to some other yarn and it's just great um but anyway so this pattern was was really fun to make you don't need much of the second color it's just kind of for the border um and these are actually like stitches that you weave in after like you don't even actually knit those like the whole shawl is knit in blue and then you just kind of add in those little white strands after um so yeah i need to block this i'm gonna keep saying that after every one maybe i'll do that tonight <laughs> Um, then this cowl is called No Harm, No Cowl. I'll show you the bad end. Um, and my friend Helen knit this, um, or was knitting it. I, I don't even know if she cast it on. Actually, I like stole the idea from her. So I was helping her like pick out three colors and all of a sudden was like, I want to make one of those and was kind of obsessed with cowls for a little bit. Um, and this is actually, um, Knit Picks Gloss that I had had for a really long time. I think I had bought like a value pack with a bunch of these like blues and cream. Um, so this was a really stash buster for sure. Um, DK weight um, and yeah, like basic stitches in the round. It was just kind of a nice um, easy project to just kind of have on the needles and, and, and work on um, and still kept you interested because there's like a lot of different textured patterns in there. So that is no harm, no cowl. Um, this one I just finished um, not too long ago, and again, won't look as nearly pretty as once I block it. What's going on with this hair right here? I need a haircut. God, I got one finally when we could like leave the house, and I need another one. Um, so this is the Laurel Shawl, and this is by Webster Street Knits. I'm not exactly sure her name, but... Um, totally love this so this is all mosaic too like this whole section is three color mosaic um so you're only carrying one color at a time throughout this whole thing this isn't brioche this is all slip stitches too um, but it kind of has that look um and then like on the there's just like a neat little kind of edge on there um so 
the sample when she kind of released this pattern was in these colors and I dyed this yarn um, to just get as close as possible to her sample because I just loved it. So I'm super happy with how this with how this came out. Um, so that is Laurel. And then I think finally for knit stuff, um, this I literally just cast off like yesterday or this weekend. This is the Rosa shawl by Isabel Kramer. Um, and this was stash busting as well. This is a little, a little more purple in real life. I mean, it's definitely pink, but well, actually it's pretty good on the camera. This thing is huge, like enormous. And it's not even blocked yet. Like, I can't even like it's, I can't even imagine what it's going to be like when it's blocked. Um, this is DK. I get really, really easy and mindless. I mean, it is a lot of purling on the wrong side. Um, but I love the look of it. This um, main color, this was total stash bust again, I think I said that. Um, this main color is Anzula Croquet, maybe? Um, and I had just three skeins of it in my stash, I think from an old yarn box when I used to subscribe to that. Um, the gray is Madeline Tosh Silk Merino, and I just had kind of a skein of that hanging around that I think I'd bought um, webs. They always do like crazy discounts on Madeline Tosh when they have their tent sale. So I grabbed one of those. And then this cream with like the pink speckles um, is Hypnotic Yarn Snowberries. And I had actually, again, coincidentally on my last podcast a year and a half ago, I had worn and shown you my um, Comfort Fade cardigan. And this was the collar that's like most of the collar um, is knit in. So I had a little bit left of that and that's all I really needed kind of for this section. I literally, until it ran out, kept doing these rows to use all of that, all of that um, color. So yeah, I love this thing. So that's all my knit stuff. So I've still been weaving like crazy, maybe not like as much as I um, would want to. Um, that's something too, I kind of go through phases where I weave all the time and don't knit and I've been kind of trying to knit more than weave I think this time. But let me show you some stuff. Um, this I love. So mostly, I think I've probably said this before even though it's been a long time, um, I tend to weave, I have kind of my formula down now for weaving um, and everything I make is about 12 inches wide by like 72 inches ish and tends to have fringe. I mostly use fingering weight yarn um, and it ends up being like super soft and drapey. Um, also, so I mean, I sell a bunch of stuff on Etsy. Again, I've said before, like I'm open to commissions. So if you have any yarn um, that you would want me to weave you a scarf for, um, that's something I do. Um, can even just be a trade for yarn too. It doesn't even have to be a money exchange. <laughs> Um, anyway, so this I love. So this I hand dyed myself. So it was very similar colors sort of to when I was making this, um, but a little bit lighter of a pink. Um, so it's just very like pinky purpley, has bits of brown in there. Um, loved, I just, I absolutely love this. I mean, I could sell it, but I almost kind of want to keep it. Um, and it was just the yarn that actually like makes this pattern. Um, it's not any kind of special pattern, but you can just kind of see the yarn close up there. Um, I also did, so this is with, um, oh my God, I'm like blanking on everything, Bay Street Yarns. Um, this is her Blackberry Cheesecake colorway. So it's this cream, um, and it doesn't look, it's very like purpley. I mean, like blackberry would look like bits of pink and blue and purple. Um, I've loved this color forever and had had this yarn for a while. So I was excited to, to finally weave with it. Then this I did with DK. So normally I do fingering weight, but this was a stash busting weave. A um, little bit different than what I usually do. This was all leftovers. I'm trying to think what the leftovers were. The light color, which you can't see tons of in the, in the fringe you can. This light color was also from my Comfort Fade cardigan. Um, it was a Little Bean Loves colorway. The pink I think was left over from a hat. I want to say that's Dragon Horde yarn. Um, and the blue, I don't know. I can't even think of anything I've done with DK that had blue recently. I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, I just kind of measured out how much yarn I had of each of those colorways and just kind of designed this little stripe thing. So blue is across everywhere and then the, the other colors are just stripes going down. It's kind of cool, different look, a little not as wide as I normally do. Um, and it's DK, so it's still drapey, but it's um, like super soft and, and more thick and smushy than what the ones I usually do. And then finally for woven stuff, um, this is Maker's Haven yarn. So this is yarn that she um, made to go with her um, book series that she writes. So like the whole Port Swan collection. If you've never checked it out, go check out um, her Instagram and everything. So it was yarn that she dyed with that. I had done a sample knit for her in these same two colors. Um, and then I got the, the same color yarn to, to weave with. And this I did as actually a plaid. Um, so I alternated the pink and the white stripes this way and this way to kind of make this design. Um, but I really love this. I love how these colors go together. Super pretty. So that's what I've done. Um, I don't have anything of what I'm doing with me because I didn't. Oh, and one other finished object that I didn't show yet. Um, this also isn't blocked. Like what the heck's wrong with me? But so I was showing this in my podcast last time and it like was just done a little bit. And I was saying like, this is, the, I'm going to work on this whip like exclusively now. And literally I finished this at some point with court, like sometime in like March or April of this year. So it, you know, was a whole year before I actually finished this. Um, anyway, this is the Like a Cloud cardigan um, by Holy Look Telly, who is probably my favorite designer. Like I knit all her stuff, it seems like. Um, yep. So I can't wait to block it. I really should, I guess, now that fall's gonna be here before we know it. Um, so this is made with um, Shibui um, Silk Cloud and Sema, I think, like held together. Um, and I really like it. Not much to really show, but um, sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah. So this is the um, Bordeaux colorway, um, and it just kind of has a nice like open front. Um, I'm not gonna try it on again until it's blocked, so I can kind of show you what it looks like. Um, but I mean, it was really easy. It's like the same pattern throughout. I did a little bit longer of a. Um, ribbed edge and similar with sleeves. I don't remember exactly what it's called for, but I was, I kind of wanted it to make sure it was long enough and I always like super, super long sleeves. Um, but yeah, it kind of makes me want to block it right now so I can have it done. Um, okay. Um, I was thinking about, where did I put it? So in terms of what I'm doing, I really, like some of these things I just recently cast off, so I'm only like a little bit of the way through what I'm doing, and I will show you those next time because I don't want this to be super long. Um, but I did decide to do a Free Your Fade, uh, no, a Find Your Fade by Andrea Mowry um, when everyone was like obsessed doing it when it first came out. Um, at the time I wasn't dying yarn and I was still kind of not good about like mixing stash and figuring out what I had but I've definitely accumulated more over time and so I decided to completely do stash buster with that so I'm using a lot of leftover yarn that I have um, and then I think a couple single skeins that just kind of fit the fade so I'll show you that next time um, also doing a couple other projects of like kits that I got like specific patterns that I bought the yarn to make that exact pattern um, so I will show you that next time as well um, I did want to show scrappy blankets. Um, so that too is interesting in watching my last podcast. Um, just how far I've come in scrappy stuff since then. I ended up, if you watched it, I had, had like lots of different ideas for scrappy projects. Like I was going to use this yarn here and here and here. I ended up just kind of sticking to like the cozy memories blanket for now. Um, because I'm weaving a lot more, like anything extra that doesn't have a square in the blanket, I'm going to just be weaving with. Um, I did also start a crochet one, but I haven't really been like sticking with that. Um, anyway, so look at this. So this is my fingering weight cozy memories. So I think it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine by nine by nine. 
well, nine squares by nine squares. Um, so it's been fun to, some of my own hand dye yarn is in here now, which is neat. Um, you can see some squares already. So like this, uh, this cowl already has this yarn in there. Um, so I only use yarn from projects that I've done in this blanket. I do have a lot of other minis and I could add them to this, but I just like the idea of each thing having been in something else. It may take me my entire lifetime to actually create a blanket out of it, but now that I'm dying yarn and weaving, it's kind of going quicker. Um, anyway, love this, super excited about it. Um, I also just bought this bag. Um, this is Bags by Awesome Granny, and I have a lot of her bags, but hadn't ever got this size before. Um, so it's a lot like a bigger size to, to hold my blanket as it's getting bigger. Um, then in my matter root bag, so I decided at some point that I was starting to get lots of leftover DK yarn and didn't necessarily have anything to do with that. So I was like, I'm going to make a cozy memories and just use TK weight yarn. Um, so I bought some signature needles when we were at um, Rhinebeck last year. So I use size six um, straight signature needles for this. And I do, so my fingering weight cozy memories is 40 stitches. Um, and I did my DK 40 stitches too, um, again with size six, where my fingering weight one is size two. Um, that way it's, you know, they're bigger squares and everything, but it goes a lot quicker. Um, so, so this is only one, two, three, four, five, six by five right now, but it's like, almost the size of my fingering weight one. Um, but it's definitely fun. So I use DK and worsted if it's not too heavy worsted. Um, so I only have this so far. I definitely have more DK to go with this one. Um, but it's fun. I love that it's gonna probably be done before my fingering weight one just because the squares are bigger. Um, so yeah, so if you have any extra DK, worth trying that too if you're a scrappy person. Um, in terms of designing, so I haven't had tons of designing mojo, I guess, since we've been kind of quarantined and more remote. Um, I think I've just been so focused on projects and kind of haven't really wanted to think on the evenings and weekends. Um, work is definitely different now that it's remote. I do work with data analytics. Um, and since I'm out of college and revenue is challenging because we have students that aren't coming back and don't want to come back or don't want to be remote, um, I do a lot of kind of the analytical stuff to kind of help figure out what our enrollment's going to be and what our revenue is going to be and how we help hand out financial aid for students that are in need and especially in need during this time. Um, anyway, so it's been more stressful the past, you know, six, eight months, six, five months. I don't know. How long have we been home? I don't know. Um, so yeah, so kind of like designing also just requires too much brain space for me sometimes. So I haven't really had a lot of time to do that. But I have designed a couple things um, and I don't have any samples with me, but not long after I did snow castles, I did a pattern called Desert Frost. Um, I did it exclusively initially for a local yarn shop um, near me. Um, she had liked, the, the owner of the local yarn shop had really liked this pattern. So I designed another mosaic pattern that was actually featured during the yarn, yarn crawl. This was in the spring of 2019. Um, so that pattern now is like fully released in public. So you can get that on either Etsy or Ravelry. So Desert Frost. Um, and that is just one skein each of two different colors of DK. Same thing, mosaic slip stitches, uh, not super hard. Um, then I designed this cowl, which is called Shady Winter. Um, this I designed as part of the Cast On Collaborative. Um, Christy Houghton of Yarn Cafe Creations and the Girls in the Yarn Cafe podcast. Um, she brought together a bunch of designers um, around Christmas time, like December. I think it was December of Designers was like the name of the project um, where we all donated. Um, every designer did a different thing, but donated um, proceeds of the sale of the pattern um, to various charities. Um, I did, I'm totally blanking now, except uh, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention is what I donated to. It was all kind of mental health charities. Um, so again, this pattern is called Shady Winter and it uses five mini skeins. So it's under, you know, just about a hundred grams, like five 20 gram mini skeins. 
Um, I also sell kits, so this was my own hand dyed yarn, um, and I have kits for this in my Etsy shop as well, and that comes with a printout of the PDF pattern, the five minis, um, and I'll give you a code to download it on Ravelry as well, or if you don't use Ravelry, I can email you the PDF. Um, but anyway, so this is in my Etsy shop as well. Um, and again, a portion of the, the proceeds for both the pattern sales and just the, and the kit as well, um, go toward that same charity. Um, so that was kind of fun. So this is one that I did then. Um, I also did a pattern called Garden Grown, um, which was a DK weight scarf. Um, I'll try to put a picture in if I can remember to, um, but it has a really kind of neat, um, like scalloped edge and like a thin kind of little, um, kind of cable going up the whole thing. Um, very different. I tend to do a lot of shawls, um, but it was kind of nice to just do a straight one color scarf. Um, and I've also done a couple custom orders and dyed. It's, it's good for kind of solid or tonal yarn. Um, so I've done some custom dyes for, for that scarf as well, which is kind of fun. Um, I'm going to show you some of my yarn because I've never been able to do that on a podcast before. Um, so some of the kits that I have um, in the shop right now. So this kind of shows you my logo and what the band looks like. Um, this is one that I've done in Valentine's Day. This is called Little Love Notes. So this is a 50 gram skein and then two uh, 20 gram minis. So it's almost 100 uh, grams, it's 90 total. Um, but it's kind of fun to have two different colored minis. You could do shorty socks, um, you know, maybe swap heels and toes or something with the different minis. Um, but I just thought this was super fun and very Valentine's Day-ish. So I think I have one or two of these left in the shop now. I also did these sock kits. So again, this is very similar to um, this chocolate covered duo, um, but this one has the, the pink and brown color and then just with a brown mini. So this is a 100 gram skein, but with a 20 gram mini. Um, so these, I think I have three of these left in the shop. Um, then in terms of other colorways that I have, excuse me, um, this is one of my more popular colors. So K uh, of the Crazy Sock Lady uh, podcast and on Instagram. Um, she had designed a sock, um, sweetheart socks, and then she did mitts as well. So bad, I didn't fully prepare. Um, so this colorway is called Bouquet Toss. Uh, I, this was one of the very first probably the first color um, that I actually dyed. Um, I did a kind of wedding collection because I released all of this yarn in 2019 right around my anniversary. Um, and it was my, where did it go for? <laughs> I can't even do all of the dates right now. So for 15 year at that point. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so I did a lot of colors that were kind of related to wedding themed things. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw a lot of the photos I had done at the time. If you haven't, you can follow me and see some of those colors. And some are available for pre-order in my shop too. But this one I have stock of. Um, it's a really kind of pretty pink with different grays and like darker um, speckles of maroon in there. Um, really love this, this color. So most of my bases, so this is Avenue Sock Base, which is, tends to be the more popular. Uh, 7525 merino nylon and 463 yards. I do have another fingering weight which is um, a three ply and is like less yardage so it's a little bit thicker. I also have an 8020 blend which is the yarn that I use for almost all of my woven things. Um, I have a 100% merino DK base um, and that's mostly it in the shop um, for that for fingering and DK is most of what I carry. But I can always dye other bases if people are interested. Anyway, so that's one of my more popular colors is Bouquet Toss. Um, this is, I would say, probably my second most popular. So this is called Chickadee Dee Dee. Um, so if you kind of have ever seen sort of the chickadee bird, which I think is popular in different um, parts of the country, but in New England, we definitely have that. It's that one that like sings and it sounds like they're saying chickadee. Um, and I have like strong childhood memories of that, like with my grandparents in the summertime, just hearing those birds. And when I hear them, I think of my grandparents all the time. Um, so it's really pretty kind of cream colored and light gray, dark gray, um, black, and like a little bit of, you can see the brown specks in there. Um, 
so this color is super fun to dye. So if you're kind of looking for a fun um, neutral, this is Chickadee Dee Dee. And then these two colors are brand new. Um, this one is called Shatter, and I adore this. I don't know if it's going to show too well on camera. Yeah, pretty well. Blues are always hard. Um, so it's a very kind of light blue with sort of darker navy and purple uh, specks on there. Um, really love it. Oh, I just realized. So I used to record with a camera, um, and I'm actually recording on my iPad. And I didn't notice things were flip-flopped. Maybe they're not when the video is done. I don't know, but it's the words are backwards to me. Um, anyway, so this is Shatter. So I have a few of these uh, in the shop right now on a couple different bases. Um, and then this is called Trapeze. It actually shows pretty well. So it's this really kind of dark teal um, green, light teal, dark teal, just some kind of off-white um, and very, very light like black speckles. It's kind of hard to see because it's like so subtle. Um, but I love this color, it's super fun. So this is just an example of some colors I have. Again, if you go to my Etsy shop, you'll see more there. Um, and finally, before I'm done for the day, um, so for my birthday, um, my dad got me a Apple Pencil. So I have this iPad and he got me an Apple Pencil. Mostly I was using it because I started to actually do like my calendar and journal and to-do list like on my iPad. I went through a phase of like trying to organize my life. Um, but then I started just kind of playing with drawing um, and kind of became obsessed. Um, so I did a few designs that are kind of hand drawn by me um, that are available um, on, so I have stickers. Pin, oh, I don't, didn't bring the pins. Where are those? Maybe I'll show them next time. But you can order any of these designs on stickers, on round pins, like normal kind of regular round pin back pins. Um, on, I have little pouches and I have totes, like tote bags. Um, these are all in my Etsy shop as well, but I did want to show some of them because I think they're super cute. This I just call Knit, Knit Happens. It's kind of like my name of the design. So it just sort of says, no, 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 I lied. This is called Knit Period because it's Knit Period. Um, and again, I hope this isn't backwards, but then it's historical that it says tink, but anyway. Um, so it's just kind of a fun little sort of stockinette stripey thing. So this is an example of like one size of sticker, um, but it, they also come in like smaller sizes as well. Some have the white back and some can also be transparent. So like if you're putting it on like a water bottle or something and you want to see the color of your water, bo water bottle behind it, there's transparent too. So this is kind of fun, a little knit period. The tote bag of this, I have one tote bag that doesn't say the words and it just has the, the design. Um, and that's kind of really cool. Um, so when I was saying knit happens before, so my other design um, is knit happens with this cute little sheep that just doesn't look very happy that knit happens. Um, so this is a really big sized round sticker. Um, it's not like cut, but it's actually round. So it's kind of a good size to put like on the back of your iPad or on the back of a um, laptop, that kind of thing. But this comes in multiple sizes as well. The other design I have this, which was one of the first ones I made, which I thought was fun. Again, if it's backwards, I'm sorry. And if I keep saying that and it's not, I look like an idiot, but that's okay. Um, knitting rules. So for me, so it says swatch, cast on, knit, cast off, and weave in ends. But swatch and weave in ends are crossed out because I tend to not want to do either of those two things. And I just want to cast on, knit, and cast off. Um, and then this I did kind of a design of cozy memories. So on the bottom, it just says... I have a heart, so it's kind of like love my cozy memories. And I just kind of played around with creating what cozy memories blankets look like. Um, so yeah, so that was kind of fun. So then I just wanted to show you an example of what some of the pouches look like. So this is a Notions pouch, um, and these come in multiple sizes as well, but this is sort of the smaller size. Uh, it's a really nice, like sturdy canvas with a really good um, zipper. So that's just like an example of that one, and it's the designs on both sides. Um, and then this is one that has kind of the knitting rules um, on both sides. So again, this is kind of the smaller, let's see the size of my hand, smaller size. Um, so yeah, so it's been kind of fun to make those projects. So um, some of those things I have in stock, some are on pre-order. Um, it just kind of depends on what everybody wants. Um, so yeah, so go check those out. I'll show you the pins and some of the other items um, next time as long, uh, along with all the things I'm kind of working on that are in progress. Um, 
but I think I'm gonna end for now. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done this. I'm a little rusty, um, but I didn't wanna kinda keep putting it off. I wanted to be able to take the time to jump on here, say hi to everybody, hope that everyone's doing well in this sort of crazy time. Um, I'm probably not gonna do like tons of editing of videos. I know I used to sort of put words on the bottom and show pictures and things. Um, again, that's kind of one of those things that ends up deterring me from doing it often because it just takes that extra time to just get it up there. Um, so I'll probably just do a couple quick edits um, and hope to get this up soon. Um, again, not gonna kind of schedule when I'm gonna do podcasts as much as I would like to, um, but I will just kind of get them done when I can, hopefully more often than last time. I hope it will be much shorter than a year and a half since the next time I create a video. Um, but it's really good to kind of be back and seeing everybody again. Um, reach out anytime. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, make sure you follow me kind of on any type of social media that you use frequently to kind of keep in touch. Um, and hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Keep on knitting. Good to see you guys. Until next time. Bye.